Welcome, Welcome Laval. Laval. Hi, Luigi. Hi, Sammy. How are you? <laughs> I'm great about yourself. Good. 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 I know we had an action-packed uh, weekend. Yes. You had an amazing yes. event, an historic event, shall I say. A Can you tell us about one. it? Absolutely. Yes. We celebrated the 150th uh, commemoration of the Confederation of Canada and also the 100th anniversary Sorry. of Vimy Ridge. So if it wasn't for Canadian soldiers, we saved the day. The Canadian yes. soldiers saved the day. So we have to be proud of that, very. That's amazing. How did it, it go? I, I, I it was an event by uh, the deputy, uh, the MP uh, of uh, Vimy, uh, Mrs. Evan Asif, and uh, it was a total success. We were supposed to be about 350 uh, people, and then we ended up over 400 people. So it was a total, total success. Congratulations. Yes. yes. Congratulations. Yes. That is amazing. Well, uh, 22e uh, Regiment of, uh, of Montreal were present, the mayor, uh, a lot of uh, dignitaries, and uh, it, it was a beautiful event, beautiful. Uh, and that's nice, and it involved the community, so yes. a lot of people, you know, obviously we broke, you broke records, there was a lot of people yes. there. I wasn't it was a great, great event to MC. I have to agree. I have to agree Very that blessed. was an amazing event, was and uh, we keep hearing about it even today, so we have it up and posted. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Um, you know I have uh, two dogs, right? I know, and they're so adorable. They're, they're horses. They're not dogs, they're horses. Uh, they're <laughs> they're cute. so they're big. Royal. They're royal poodles. <laughs> actually. Royal poodles. And my, and my daughter has, has another royal poodle, yes. so we actually we have kind of three dogs. Three, but, kind of. Uh, kind of. <laughs> um, there is the... It's the first time in Laval on May 20, uh, sorry, May 26 and 20, uh, the weekend of the 27, 28, sorry, we have the at the Cosmodome, Le Salon d'Amimo. Uh, so it's going to be just on our pets, it's dogs, our cats. Uh, it's our first time in Laval, so finally, usually it's uh, not in Laval, so it's the first <laughs> one. Um, and uh, the organizer is Isabelle Pichet. She w cannot be here today with Unfortunately. us. Unfortunately. But I said I need to mention it for those animal uh, uh, lovers out lovers. there. Lovers. So uh, May 27th and 28th, that weekend. Don't at, miss uh, it. At the Cosmodome. And uh, we'll see you there. Uh, Laval families will be there. Sammy, we have a great guest, someone that I've known for a long time. Uh, what I would say, if I think of education, I think of Jennifer. And uh, we are very proud to have her on the show. So I want to welcome Jennifer McCarroll, Chair of the Council of Commission, of course, our only school board, the number one, Sewer Fulori School Board. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. I wanted to ask you, what is the role of a school board exactly? School boards are very important to the functioning of your local demo democratic process. So when you think about what the community does to be involved in education, that's what your school board is really all about. So they ensure good governance, they ensure good practices in education, they ensure that your schools are running very well. And when you think of a school board, you have to remember that a school board is comprised of many facets in education. So you've got your head office, which for some reason we have a culture of calling that a school board, but it's not. You have a head office, you've got all of your schools, you have your teachers, you have your staff, you have your principals, your students, your parents, and then your community. That's really what a school board is. So if you mean head office, head office is there to ensure that all of our schools are running efficiently and that we're giving the best service possible to ensure student success. When um, in your day-to-day -day tasks, uh, it involves a lot of people to run the head office, our school board. Yeah, good, you're good. Uh, <laughs> how, do, how, do, how does it all work? Because some yeah. of the questions we, you know, there was a debate a few years back, yeah. actually not that long ago, yeah. is do we need a school board? Do we take out the school board? Mm -hmm. And uh, I know for us, we, we always said we needed a school board. We yeah. can't leave everything to the individual schools, just too much to do. Mm -hmm. So how do, you, how do you respond to that? Your head office is really there as a, I would consider it more of a service organization. So your head office is in service to your schools. Because as you mentioned earlier, you know, you've got your principals in your schools and the concern that we have now in education and in governance is 
what are we doing to support those individuals? We're asking so much of them, and what we really want in our schools to ensure our students are successful is good pedagogical leaders. But more and more, that role is morphing into a management, business management. So your school board head office, what they're supposed to be doing is supporting the schools to make sure that HR is functioning properly, that your maintenance is functioning properly. They'll help you with union issues. They'll make sure that the financial issues are taken care of for you. They will make sure that the measures and the orientations from the ministry are implemented in a proper fashion. They'll set your strategic goals, your mission, your vision, so that we're all rowing in the same direction. Each one of our schools is unique and distinct, but our objectives are aligned. And that's one of the secrets of successes for the Sir Wilfrid Laurier School Board is when that is set and when everybody's got buy-in and everybody feels supported, your community is involved, your parents are involved, and there's a reason why we're in the top 10 in the province, and that's because we're doing that model well. Awesome. Well, talking about being in the top 10, um, I think so I already deserve some bragging rights. Yep. So here's the time to do it. Yep. Um, the last statistics oh. on graduation rates. Yep. Uh, is it in fourth or third position? We're actually in sixth position, sixth position. Uh, which is, uh, it might seem like a drop, but at the end of the day, it's still very good because what it means is that education in general is improving in the process. So in my capacity as president of the Quebec English School Board Association, I still feel very proud because seven of your nine English school boards are in the top 10. So for Laurier remains in the top 10, and not because we aren't doing well, but no. because everybody else is picking up their game, and that's great. Education shouldn't really be about competition, sh though it should really be about sharing your successes and your best practices. So sixth means that everybody else is doing better, maybe because they modeled them a little bit after, modeled themselves a little bit after some of the best practices that we have at Sir Wilfrid Laurier, which is great news. Uh, so we're still very proud of our, our graduation. We rates. hear that often about uh, the best practices of yep. Sir Wilfrid Laurier. Yep. Um, in percentage, uh, Sir Wilfrid Laurier is at what percent in the, as a top six? At 80? We're at 84 percent. 84 percent. 84 percent, yeah. But we rarely Excellent. talk about our percentage because we're always focusing on that missing 15, 16 percent. Where so you must have to think outside of the box very all the time. often. All the time, because your at-risk students are the ones that, of course, we're very concerned about. So you've got different plans of action for all of the different portraits of students that we have in our school board. So from your top achievers, what do you do for them to continue supporting them and making them feel academically successful so that they can be the best that they can possibly be? To your general population of students that, you know, what, what are we doing to inspire them, give them as many opportunities as they can? To your at-risk population, your special needs population. Mm -hmm. It is such a science to make sure that you're reaching everybody to the best of your ability. And uh, the best practices that we have are really testament to the wonderful, wonderful administrators that we have and the terrific teachers that we have and all the support staff. It is, I'm so proud to be uh, chair of this school board only because of that. If just that alone, uh, I know that we have the best. And so uh, for that, I feel very grateful. Uh, I, I think we agree on you on that one because I know a lot of them personally. Yeah. Um, you mentioned there's so much that the school board does, yep. but I want to touch two things for this episode, uh, special needs. Yep. There's a lot of great initiatives, the SEAC committee that you were part of from mm -hmm. the early stages mm -hmm. and to what it's called, uh, Crestview Elementary with that special need. Can you tell us a little bit more? One of the things that Sir Wilfrid Laurier does that makes us unique is that we integrate our special needs community to the tune of about 94 to 95 percent. So that means that our special needs community, our at-risk community, are right in the classroom following the same program. They're not just in the school, they are actually part of the classroom setting. So important. It is really important. As a parent of kids who have special needs, it's what you want. You want your kids to feel accepted and you want them to have all the same advantages and opportunities as all of the other students in that setting. It's a challenge for the teachers, so we continue to support our teachers to make this vision a reality. But what it does is it creates not just success in those kids that need that additional support, but it also creates a sense of acceptance and empathy and community in the students that maybe are more neurotypical, because I hate the word normal, uh, but neurotypical. The kids maybe that don't need as much support so that they can start working together, showing that vision of collaboration and understanding that you know what, there is no such thing as normal. We're all different and that means that we have to embrace differences in other people. And so that's great one initiative. of the things that's great. 
yeah, very proud of that. It's it's already time for us to uh, it, it's to say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> that was too fast. too fast. I could talk it more and more. Right. Right. <laughs> uh, but we're gonna. We, we already discussed it in pre-production. We we want you back. You know, pending your Absolutely. schedule. I would love and to come what, back. And what what we should do is, of course, you know, the school year is ending, but there's a new one starting. Yep. Um, we'll, we're going to get her back for, for the back Absolutely. to school period. And Absolutely. It'd we'll, we'll be a pleasure to come back. Days. Thank you for the opportunity Thank today. You. Thank for you for with coming us. and congratulations. I know it's a lot of work. You're, you're traveling a lot. You're at a lot of conferences, but thank I you for it. supporting uh, the great school board and the community and, and the students. That's I amazing. feel like I'm a very lucky person to have that opportunity. It's, uh, we have a great community and uh, I'm very grateful for the, the opportunity to promote, represent and sit down with people like you to talk about how good we are. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. We do, we do have a very great guest today Hello. from the District of Renault, the City Councillor, Mr. Reynold Adams. How are you today? Doing just fine. Hello, Céline. Hello, Luigi. Mr. Adams, welcome to our show. It's my pleasure being here. Now, before being in politics, you had an interesting career. Can you tell us about that? Well, I did something that actually prepared me to enter politics. I used to be a, a full-time translator, professional translator working from English to French, French to English, and basically conveying a message from the author of the message to the public uh, the, the message is intended for. And politics is pretty much the same thing. I convey a message from my fellow citizens to City Hall and the other way around also. You have a pretty big district. It's, it's actually the uh, downtown of uh, Laval, district of It's the of very Renault. heart of the island. It in includes the most uh, residential parts of the new downtown area that's being developed right now. Tell us about your territory, because it's true. Now we have, in your territory, you have a lot of new uh, projects that are being developed. Exactly. Uh, the, the district of Renault needs a branding of its own, because most people who live there think they uh, live in Chamonix. So when, whenever they have a problem, they call the counselor for Chamonix instead of myself. But uh, the district of Renault, as I said, is the very heart of downtown. So it's bordered by ha provincial roads. Uh, 148, which is saint Martin Boulevard, Highway 19, 440 and Highway 117, which is Curie Label. So it's a perfect rectangle right smack in the heart of the island. So it's also divided into by Highway 15, which means there are two separate parts uh, to the turn. district. So it's basically two half a district that I'm representing, you know, and it makes for very interesting challenges at times. And some of the, uh, some of the bigger projects that are going on in your, in your territory would be the new downtown area, uh, part of the new downtown area, uh, some major projects you may have heard of, like the aquatic complex, uh, the new uh, Armand Frappier uh, Bio museum. Centre, museum for science, basically, uh, which are both uh, being, uh, well, the uh, museum is being uh, developed, uh, it, it's a project, it, in its project form right now, so plans and uh, uh, there, there the, the, planning, the plans, the, basically. In the planning stages. The, the planning uh, stages, whereas the aquatic complex, you may have seen what it will look like. It was the result of an uh, architectural contest, uh, the very first one in the history of modern Laval. Uh, the only known such contest in the past has been for City Hall itself. Uh, within the city? The, the, the contest was within the city? Uh, it was open to uh, our architectural firms from outside the, com uh, the, uh, the city, uh, but um, there were several residents of the city involved in judging the contest, uh, one of which was Alexandre de Passy. Uh, Very exciting. So uh, as a user of uh, an aquatic complex, he knew exactly what the requirements were, what, the, what kind of equipment would be needed, um, just basically where everything would fit in inside uh, such a, a large-scale uh, complex. Um, and, and that territory, there's, there's, uh, there's also additional projects going on, La Bibliothèque Centrale, so the... That's actually going to be outside. The, the is that one outside That will be in, the, in La Valle Rapide, just ah. across the road. Across the, the road, okay, yes. all right. Um, what are some of the uh, projects that you're working on at the moment? Well, the accomplishments I'm most proud of uh, relate to human development. I'm involved with uh, organizations such as the Centre de Pédiatrie Sociale, the Social Pediatric Centre at Saint Martin. I'm involved with the uh, Conseil d'établissement at Simon Valley School, just across from where I live. Uh, that makes me an active player in 
uh, not just developing roads and building uh, aquatic complexes, but also in the future development of the people themselves, the, the children who live in the district, and uh, how they will grow up to be uh, involved, concerned adults, and uh, involved in developing their own uh, living environment, their own, their own neighborhood. Uh, and involved in uh, some several uh, issues as part of the, the city's executive committee. I'm responsible for culture, for seniors, for tourism, for the handicapped. So that uh, makes up, takes up a lot of my time. <laughs> uh, we did get a lot of um, senior documentation that you've sent over, and I think that's important. You know, we always talk about resources helping the community. Absolutely. Um, and in one of our conversations that you and I had in the pre-production was, well, the, at the senior level, I know you're heavily, you're very involved also, and you produced a document with resources. Specifically for English-speaking seniors, because uh, as the uh, executive committee member responsible for seniors, one thing I realized was the lack of information that's made available to seniors. Uh, Specifically in English? Uh, yes, it is. Oh, wow. uh, the resources in the guidebook are all available in English. Uh, they uh, relate to organizations that published documents that they made available, uh, websites that uh, are, uh, uh, can be consulted directly in English. Uh, and uh, that's the kind of information that uh, seniors were lacking uh, in, uh, in the city of Laval. Not just, uh, not just in Renault. It, it was meant for Renault seniors at the beginning. But as it turns out, uh, the information the demand was there. Is, is for the whole of the island. And, and <clears throat> we did receive a lot of great comments on those resources that we've uh, made sure that they're passed on and available in easy access. So thank Absolutely. you for Absolutely. Thank you for that. It's my pleasure. Ronald, our time is up already. It, it passes too um, fast. We're going to ask you to we welcome you back another time. Certainly. Absolutely, next and season. And we can talk about culture and tourism. We would love that. Well, culture and tourism is absolutely uh, <laughs> something we need to touch at the, at the near future. Thank you again. My pleasure. Thank, thank you, you for, for being with you. us. Sammy, we have an, another amazing guest. Thinking uh, wedding. Thinking wedding, reception, food, and he's a specialist. So we're very happy to introduce Angela Miconi, Director of Operations for the South NBC Plaza, also partner with the uh, PMG, PMG Group. PMG, absolutely. Congra congratulations and welcome to our show. Thank you very much for having me. Our favorite season is coming soon, the wedding season. season? <laughs> Any plans? What? <laughs> <laughs> no, personally, no you? No, not yet. Lady, still available? No, no, no there's something, <laughs> something's up, something's up. <laughs> she is available still. <laughs> so help us prepare for this season. Okay, well, the season really for us, the wedding season would go anywhere between the months of May till about, I'd say, the end of October. It's a season that's full it's with... It's a long uh, season. It's a long season. That's the wedding season. In between, we do have a lot of corporate functions that go on, and then you have your grad season that goes on. But if we're talking the wedding season alone, it's between, I would say, right after Easter, so I would say end of April, beginning of May, all the way till the end of October. That, uh, that's a long, that's <coughs> a big time frame. Yes. But usually when a couple is planning to get married, they're doing all the research the year before, right? Prior. Correct, so the, the average time. to look time for in a reception and, and, uh, and food, because that's... That's a must. That's a must. We're talking about what, seven services, seven course meals? Well, yes, there's some nationalities that do still do seven services. I think now the trend has changed and uh, people want a lot more quality rather than quantity. Uh, what's important is they come and see us. We always tell people to come and see us early. Um, in, you know, we'll, we'll say a year in advance if you want a specific date, um, at least because of the number of guests you are. So that's the first step. You give us a call and we try to work with as much as possible your budget and we'll see exactly what you need in terms of your needs. And um, we see a lot of trends now with different nationalities getting married. So there's mixed, mixed weddings going on. So you want to leave it to the experts to, to maybe guide you into a certain direction in terms of what we have to serve your guests. That's a great point. Is it always two choices? No. Uh, well, we some some sometimes we'll do two choices in a, in a reception hall or banquets setting. It's a little bit different than a restaurant. Uh, two choices uh, could be done. Although we try to facilitate the kitchen as much as possible because we are serving different events at once. Um, but you see, if we do two choices, it would be on the couple's part to get the choices from their guests and relay that information to us so to have a, a spe speedier service. 
So when, when a couple comes and see you a year in advance, they're looking at the size of the hall, they're looking at the food, what else goes into preparations? What advice do you have these uh, couples uh, to be wed? Well, the couples that come and see us, traditionally they want to look at the space. So once they first come and see us, we show them the space they would require for the amount of people that they are, and then we'll get into the food part. The food part, with the, we notice with the newer and younger generations, sometimes they really want to see something a little bit out, outside of the box, and we, we appreciate that because it, it sort of uh, get, keeps us on our toes, always just allows us to know different menus, different trends, and our chefs also like that because they're always in training technically. So we'll get down to the food menu part within their budget, and then from that we work on what's included in the decor and uh, how we can help them out, uh, save money pretty much in with every, uh, every way possible. Mind you, at your hall, it's so beautifully <coughs> decorated. Thank you. There's not much to do because you can even have the cocktail outside of the Correct. hall. You can rent another hall also. Correct. It's possible to do. Correct. So amongst the PMG group, we, with all the properties, we have a certain uh, decor that fits into pretty much differently into all our properties. Uh, we can have some venues that have a ceremony outside. Uh, we have some venues that are find themselves on golf courses. Mm -hmm. uh, we have some venues that are decor from A to Z. Uh, so pretty much we can give you anything. You want a penthouse? upstairs you want bedrooms included in your package uh, that's all taken care of with our group and uh, we also have alliances with different um, suppliers if I could say in the wedding industry whether it be limousines whether it be suits and uh, we help you out with all of that oh that's amazing yes oh that I didn't know so it's a one-stop shop if they need all that uh, sort of it's sort of as a one-stop shop that's the whole goal about this PMG group but what we try to do is affiliate ourselves with different uh, suppliers in the industry and what we want to do is when the client calls these suppliers and they mention our name there's a reduction that comes with it and then obviously uh, inevitably they get a better service and, and you know user-friendly exactly that's right that's the goal What's the tendency now as far as um, when, we, when we talk about uh, the weddings that you see coming up the last year or two, uh, what's the trend going on as far as music or decorations? What are people, like at one point there used to be a lot of photo booths. <coughs> Is that t still a popular trend? What do you see as trends? Well, trends right now, we're still seeing the photo booths, we're still seeing the candy stations, the, the, the cake pops and all that uh, when it comes to food. Uh, for photo booths, uh, really a lot of DJs are still offering that service. Uh, so it's something that um, is still around and we still like it because it sort of um, helps with the entertainment of the evening. Because, you know, couples are spending so much money and so much time into their wedding. You don't want it to be, uh, I don't want to use the word boring, but, you know, you don't want it to be an event that just drags on. Uh, so any type of entertainment you can get uh, to kind of uh, help your guests uh, throughout the long hours of the evening is best. Uh, we are still seeing bands in the, in the industry. Uh, we have uh, three, four bands that we keep seeing uh, throughout the years. Uh, DJs are a big sell right now. Uh, Affiliated with you guys or not necessarily? Not necessarily, no. We, we, we really try to leave that up to the clients and uh, we do refer if we have to. And uh, again, you'll see DJs at uh, you know, the, the smallest of budgets up until uh, you know, big budgets. So depending what you want to spend. Uh, but usually if you go to a company uh, like ourselves, uh, we have what we call our coordinators. And what they want to do is they supply you from A to Z. So the so coordinators will, will tell you exactly what you should do for your event to be successful. And we ask the right questions. Um, so it's important to know what your needs are and then we'll get you there. What is the most outrageous request you ever had? Well, the fun part about our business is we get to know different nationalities. So the different nationalities, they have different cultures, they have different um, maybe ways of doing their events. Um, so we do have uh, nationalities that want to bring in different things, whether it be the uh, carrying in the bride and groom uh, on their shoulders, whether it be a horse uh, bringing in the bride and groom. Uh, so, you know, our halls are equipped with the space for to have people come in with that. We've had cars come into our, our banquet spaces. We've had, uh, you know, Harley Davidson's bikes uh, brought into our, our space. So, so you're completely prepared, no matter we're what. We're prepared from A to Z. If we have the right timing, we'll make it happen. Um, you know, there was one property where we had a ceremony completely in the parking lot. Um, you know, we made, uh, uh, it was a big, big, big tent And it tent wasn't looking up. like one at, at the end. No, we had, uh, we had a big tent set up. I mean, if we have the right timing and the right planning, uh, we, we can get it done. Wow, well, it's just amazing. You had uh, all these original ideas. And so, see, when you're going to a wedding, it's not uh, what it used to be maybe 20, 30 years ago. It's a lot more you know, what the couple wants, what they want to get out of it, what they want to showcase the, all the guests. And I'm happy that you brought that attention to us because when we think of a wedding, we don't always think of all the extra things that one can do. I like that a lot. 
No, well, it's important for us to be up to date as well. So we attend a lot of shows, whether it be a trade show on food or whether it be a trade show on decor and see what the new trends are so we can offer that to our guests. And as well as partners, what we do is we always have our own events. And when we have our own, own events is when we really, really try to do something different. And uh, we see if it works and how we can manipulate it and change it so the guests could, could have it at their, their events. Excellent. Angelo, it's, uh, it's already over. Thank you for coming in. Thank educating so us mm -hmm. as, a, as a professional and expert on uh, on one important topic this time of year, the wedding season. So I hope that it helps out all our viewers, and I think Absolutely. it does. Uh, thank you for coming, and please come back another time. Well, thank you for having and us. We'll, uh, it was a we'll great touch being another here. Subject. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Have a good day. It's already the end. Another episode gone by. Um, so much fun. We had three amazing guests. Absolutely. Um, I, I've, of course, you learn every time from each one of them. I mean, we talking do. about our own school board, the Sofa Laurie School Board, knowing their uh, best practices, they're in the top 10. Uh, it's just amazing, and uh, it keeps growing. And uh, what about Angela Miconi telling us about all the different... This is so awesome. ...wedding ideas, traditions? Think out of the box. He'll provide it for you, as simple as that. This is so cool. Don't you feel like getting married? Oh, I'll prepare your Tell me. wedding. I'll, I'll plan your wedding. Uh, you plan lady. my wedding, I'll plan yeah. your wedding, okay? Oh, shoot. So, guys, <laughs> she is available. Because usually you turn it on me that I'm available. I so have now to I'm turn it on you. She's available. You're the hey. star. I have to turn it on you. You're the, I'm a star, but you're the superstar. <laughs> let's, let's not forget we had Randall Adams. I mean, uh, quite a, an incredible uh, district that he has. A lot of things are Absolutely. happening in uh, the district of Be Adelaide. proud, Laval. You have a beautiful downtown now. Beautiful. So many things coming up. So stay tuned. That's one thing for sure, right? There's a lot of stuff coming up uh, in Laval, not only for 217, but beyond. Stay tuned. Absolutely. Planning your wedding. Remember, we have to plan <laughs> his wedding. Help me out on social media. Yeah, yeah. Help her out. <laughs> You're all invited. <laughs> See? That's, that's a reason to celebrate. I'm in. You are? Oh, you're so on. You're such a troublemaker. <laughs> yes, I am. See you next time, we'll guys. See you next week. <laughs>